<clears throat> it appears that someone didn't get the dress code memo. Hello, this is Ken. I like making things. I like making things out of paper, and I like making things cooler, especially my figures. Sometimes figures don't look all that screen accurate. All they need is a bit of touch up here and there to unleash the hidden potential. I also love using everyday tools and materials to recreate iconic scenes from my figures, so they can shine on my display. Subscribe to my channel and join my DIY adventure as I ask myself the same question every week. Can I make it? Last week, I fixed and significantly improved the armor Thor from the Love and Thunder Wave. It may be my favorite Thor figure now. Check it out if you haven't already. Today, I'm gonna work on Gore. This is an interesting figure. My first impression of the figure is underwhelming. This is supposed to be the villain of the movie, but he looks very plain and unintimidating. But in the trailer, he looks quite menacing and threatening. I do see a lot of molded details on the figure. There is some pretty neat paint apps done to the figure when looking at it up close, but it does look a bit unpainted from afar. Let's deconstruct this figure. In the trailer, Gore is always depicted in this monochromatic atmosphere. Everything is in black and white and in high contrast. This figure is also monochromatic, but it's mostly grey and white. I want to enhance the contrast on the figure to bring out the details. That means I can only really use the color black or white to do so. I really like the head. You can tell Hasbro spent a lot of effort in making it look right. They even painted some veins on the side of his head. My goal for today is to transform Gore into the menacing big bad he deserves to be using very limited colors. So, can I make it? I removed the cape off screen so I can work on his outfit unobstructed. I'm gonna start with the belt. The belt is an area we don't tend to pay too much attention to, so it's a good place to test the paint. I've always expressed how much I dislike using the color black, because it's a very harsh color. It can be watered down, but it becomes muddy quickly, so there's not a lot of wiggle room when it comes to blending. What I'm trying to do is to emphasize the fold lines with the black. I didn't want to use a dry brush because that will make the paint difficult to blend, so I kept my brush slightly damp. The kinda nice thing about it is that I can use the brush to manipulate and push the paint around while it's still wet. Okay, that kinda works. It looks a bit odd right now because it's the only part that has these dark shadows. Now that I kinda know how the paint reacts, I'm gonna now work on the lower part of his body still using a damp brush and kind of staining the folds slowly. If I'm more confident, I can use a drier brush, but I'm not brave enough yet. I have patience. I can take my time and build up the color this way. My advice is, rather than trying to get it to look right on the get-go, it's better to work in layers instead. Start with a damp brush for the first layer, blending out any harsh lines. Once that layer has dried, Go over these areas again with a more precise or drier brush to intensify the color. It is much easier to build up the color than the other way around. I'm doing a quick wash on this torso. There aren't that many folds here, so I don't want to do too much. Back to the bottom half of this outfit. Hasbro did add a bit of paint there to suggest dirt, I think, but it's not enough. I'm gonna go over these areas with the black too to make the bottom part of his outfit dirtier looking. There are lots of molded folds here so I just need to follow the folds and blend the color to keep it natural looking. Okay, now onto the cape fling. It's mostly white and has lots of fold molded on it. I want to be selective when it comes to the shading. I think if I add black to every fold, the cape will become too busy looking. I want the attention to go to Gore's face, not his cape. I actually really like the back of his cape. It looks very drapey. It looks like a piece of garment naturally draping over his shoulders. All it really needs is a bit more shadows. So, I'm applying a black wash over all the areas that go inwards. 
making the foes that stick out pop against the shadows. Alright, time to add in the blackest bits of shading. I'm using a fine detailing brush here for better precision. I'm keeping the brush slightly damp so I still have a few seconds to blend things out if I make a mistake. Another key to keep in mind is not to hyper-focus on one area. It may look unbalanced or too intense at first, but it will make more sense when the paint is applied to the entire figure. So I'm going to go over the other areas again to redefine some of the areas with the black. I really like the hyper black and white look in the trailer. It's such a unique and intense look. I want to replicate that on this figure. So I'm adding a bit of white to some of the high points of the figure like on some of the folds. To recreate that unnatural, intense, monochromatic look from the movie. Gotta be subtle though. Here's Gore's head. I can see Christian Bale's likeness. But he looks a little soft. So first, I'm gonna rub a bit of black paint over his scars to make them stand out more against the grey. The tricky part is to keep the black natural without making it look like skid marks. I'm also rubbing a bit of black around his eyes too. Since Score is wearing white, I need his eyes to be in the complete opposite colour for them to stand out. This will also add to his threatening presence. And to finish the face, I'm rubbing the rest of the black on his jaw and on his lips. I have to do the lips off screen because I want the strokes to be precise. No smudge lipsticks for gore. And lastly, his eyes. I really like those golden eyes of his. The figure comes with normal looking pupils. So I'm gonna dot some gold over them and hopefully change the color. Alright, here's the painted head. Look at the difference. The original wasn't that bad, but I love the painted one so much more. You can tell Gore's backstory simply by looking at him now. I like that everything is blended nicely and still looks natural. What do you think? Did I capture Gore's look? Let me know down below. Alright, here's Gore all painted. Look how plain the original looks. I love how the finished one turned out. There's a range of tones to the figure now, from the blackest black to the whitest white. I was worried that the figure may turn out too intense or too muddy, but I think I got the right balance. My favorite part has gotta be the eyes. The golden eyes just suit this face so well. I'm not the biggest fan of this design, but it works. Sometimes a simple black and white look can just be as interesting as a colored one. Another thing I love is that it does kind of look like I got a black and white filter on. But this is just how the figure looks. It no longer has this unfinished feel to it. If anything, the face is actually very realistic looking. If you tell me this is a life-sized marble sculpture of gore, I would believe you too. Look at those creepy eyes. They are unsettling to look at. Another cool design choice they went with is that they kept the sword black making it stand out against the mostly white and grey gore. The concept behind Gore's design is pretty cool. I love how expressive Gore is. The whole mood changes with a simple head tilt. But I still feel like this figure is missing something. Especially with how limiting his legs are. I feel like I need to build him a base to stand on to make up for the lack of possibility on his lower body. For the display base, I want Gore to stand on a piece of terrain, but also in black and white. Kinda like this scene. I want to keep this base small though, because it won't make sense if it's too big and other characters are just standing on it in full color. So it's just gonna be big enough for Gore. I'm cutting random chunks of styrofoam and sticking them together on a piece of cardboard to form the piece of terrain. I've been saving these for a while. I finally get to use them again. To me, styrofoam is great because they have this natural organic rocky look to them, and you get them for free from various packages. Now that the glue has dried, I'm going to do the same thing here. 
using black as shading and giving the base that monochromatic look. Another thing you have to keep in mind is that the base can't be too bright. Our eyes generally like to look at the brightest object. So if the base is too bright, our eyes will want to subconsciously look at the base instead of gore. So let me do a test here. Let's see how it looks. Oh, okay, not bad. Now I just have to cut out the excess cardboard. Cut, cut, cut. And paint the edges black so it blends for the styrofoam. Ta-da! Here is the base. I love how alien it looks. It looks like a piece of terrain from an alien planet. Let's put gore in it and see how it looks. Oh, okay, that works. It fits gore's look very well. And since it's made of styrofoam, I can insert the sword and make it look like gore's just stabbed the planet with it. Now this looks way more cinematic. Yay! Hey, you can now support me on Patreon. I post quite regularly there from behind-the-scenes updates to sneak peeks to video breakdowns. Top-tier members will receive a DIY 3D mini poster every month. These mini posters look great by themselves, but even cooler next to other mini posters. I love making things, and this is my way to thank my supporters. The link to my Patreon is in the description box down below. Now let's end this with a photo shoot. I'm surprised at how much I'm enjoying this figure. The design isn't my favorite, and I don't like how restricting Gore's legs are. But these photos are great. Like there's a story behind every gesture or movement. The best part of this figure has gotta be the head. It's molded nicely and doesn't have that toy-like look to it. What surprises me most is how different he looks with simple head tilts. Gore is emoting without changing his expressions. It's very impressive. Gore just looks effortlessly natural in these poses. I had so much fun taking photos of him. He looks even better on the display base. He looks so much more dynamic with the base. I'm glad I made this. I feel like this figure is now 10 times cooler. What do you think? Do you like what I've done? Give this video a like and subscribe. I'm so close to 10k subs and I have a few more Thor related videos I still want to do. As always, stay inspired and I'll see you next week. I can make it, so can you.